Hello, this is Guru Prasad Balaji. Today, I'm just going to demonstrate how to install SharePoint Server 2010 on Windows Azure. Yes, you might be a little confused about why I'm choosing SharePoint Server 2010. Yes, most of the customers have migrated or have already started using SharePoint Server 2013 which is also available in a single click when you choose the virtual machine on your Windows Azure subscription. But still, many existing customers still have their existing farms running on SharePoint 2010 or still develop using the same. So this representation just pulled me in to demonstrate to you and for the one who are looking into incorporating the power of cloud in their SharePoint application migrating from on-premises to cloud. By this way you will enjoy the increase in scalability, computing and accessibility in a secured space and access the resources on cloud at the speed of your on-premises servers. Planning a farm topology. Make sure whether you need a single server farm or a multi-server farm. A single server farm is a farm where you have your SharePoint application and your SQL server together on the same server. A multi-server farm gives you the option to have your application and SQL server database split up on multiple servers wherein will be used for more scalability and for high availability like clustering. There can be multiple content databases or other databases like search services database and report services database. But there can be only one SharePoint config database and they cannot be moved to any other database server later. Prerequisites. You gotta have your SQL Server installer in case of the Express Edition if you choose. Or you gotta have your installation disk ready. And also you got to have your SharePoint installation disk or copy the installation folder to your Windows Azure virtual machine, which I will be covering post in, in the video demonstration. You will need Microsoft Identity Foundation, either 64-bit or 32-bit that you choose to install. In this case of the virtual machine, it is 64-bit. And you got to have Microsoft Filter Pack 2.0 and Microsoft Chart Controls for .NET 3.5 because SharePoint 2010 is built upon Microsoft .NET Framework 3.5 so it is a must that you gotta have the chart controls ready for your installation as a part of the prerequisites then have your installation of IIS 7 or IIS 7.5 having configured with ASP.NET with your server roles and the features that are available on your server manager. Have your .NET Framework up to date. In this scenario, we will need .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1. That is 3.5.1. Installation. If you are planning for multi-server farm, make sure your servers are ready with their roles like database server, IIS front-end server, and application servers. Or in the case where you have a need for a cluster, you got to make these things ready and put them on the same domain. In this scenario, let's assume that we are going to use SharePoint 2010 to install on a single server farm, which can later be scaled with the help of the installer by adding other servers to it. Note. I'm demonstrating here using the Windows Azure Pay As You Go subscription. This doesn't relate the SharePoint server Sysprep. I mean to say, this doesn't relate the SharePoint server 2013 that comes Sysprep on the Windows machine. If you prefer, then you will need to go for a SharePoint farm subscription or anything equivalent. You will need to contact Windows Azure support for more details. This demo is a lightweight SharePoint application that will demonstrate about the installation and scalability and not the features on it. Here you go. This is the front screen that you get 
once you subscribe to the Windows Azure platform and where you will be first targeting towards virtual machine when you just click on it because everyone has a temptation to create a virtual machine first but before that you got to make sure one thing that you got to have a storage account what is this this is a screen where it shows you in the bottom you have a new icon when you just click on it it pops up with a screen where you have multiple options and choices that you can see towards the left sidebar yes it's going to have the virtual machines it's going to have the storage and other data management tools where you will be also having the reports and other options here we're going to choose the new button and going to click on data management and click on storage to create new storage account yes it's either you can click on the storage that you find towards the left sidebar by clicking on it and towards right you will find create a storage account or you can click on the new and choose the storage and click quick create which will enable the option where you can choose your URL and put on your affinity group and if you want you can enable geo replication too okay let me just brief out what is affinity and geo replication affinity group is quite important making sure that your sharepoint resources reside with respect to each other having them beside many of them get confused with what is affinity group and availability set yes affinity group allows you to have the resources beside each other and availability set is just similar to your clusters and geo replication enables you to have in control with replicating towards multiple data centers or to have them onto the same data center it provides you the privilege to handle it and there you go you got to click on create storage account which will enable you a storage account yes that is it there you go i have created a storage account named storage underscore space which would let me have an account on the cloud yes i have chosen a data center that is central us wherein i will be able to have a storage account over there okay what do you see over here yes exactly you got to click on the new and click on compute virtual machine and create as i said before we are not going to choose from the templates that has sharepoint on it we're going to create a plain vanilla flavor of SharePoint Server 2008 R2 with Service Pack 1, and I'm going to name this as SP Server 2010. Yes, I have the option where I can check whether my DNS is available or not. Yes, you have a couple of options to enable affinity groups and availability sets below the image option. And once you're done, just click on Create a Virtual Machine. Yes. And there you go. This screen shows you to choose your private port and the public port to enable the remote desktop. Yes. Most of them come to a confusion at this moment. How secure my application is on the cloud? And how do I access it? Port 3389 is going to be the private port that's going to talk to your Windows Azure cloud platform. But when you're trying to access it to a towards the public port you can either assign your public port that you prefer or you can click on auto wherein it will automatically generate a port for you which comes through the RDP access so when you download the RDP file to your desktop and connect to it when you when you download the RDP file and try to connect it would automatically connect you to the Windows Azure network then from there it would try to connect you to the private port yes I'm done with my setup over here yes what do I gotta do I gotta get into my installation of SharePoint 2010 yes there we go 
now we are on the remote desktop connection connected to the cloud virtual machine that we have created. What I have done is I've just copied the installation disk of SharePoint Server 2010 to my desktop. And since I have installed using the setup.exe or one could use splash.hda file which would guide you through the prerequisite installer followed by the setup.exe wherein it will install the SharePoint contents on your server. Pause to it, the SharePoint configuration wizard would be popping up. Since I skipped it, I'm going to start it once again with the SharePoint configuration wizard by clicking on Microsoft SharePoint 2010 products and clicking on the products configuration wizard. It will take a couple of minutes to launch. Pause to this. You, you can configure your SharePoint server farm how it got to be. It can be a single server farm or a multi server farm. Yes, we are here. To set up the SharePoint server products, like setting up this database server name and granting the permissions to the username uh, domain administrator that we are using to set up the SharePoint server, we got to follow this procedure. Yes, I'm going to hit next and it would prompt me with the dialog box stating that the Internet Information Services, SharePoint Administration Service and SharePoint Time Service, SharePoint Timer Service will be restarted. Pause to this procedure. Yes, I'm going to accept this by clicking on yes. Here is a page that shows how to connect to the server farm. That is, if you have an existing server farm, you can choose the first option. Or in my case, I'm going to choose a new server farm. So I'm going to click on create a new server farm. I'm going to hit next. It prompts you to type in the database server name. I'm going to enter the host name of my server, followed by the domain account that I'm using. to set up the SharePoint application. It prompts me to enter a password, passphrase. What is a passphrase and what is its, its consistence? Let me just enter something and look at the dialog box that it prompts with the error. Yes. Okay, there we go. I got to enter a text that has English terms on it and also it should have one capital letter and also alphabets. Non alphanumeric characters are not allowed in this procedure. So I'm going to type a passphrase that will make me remember all the time in case of a password recovery. And when I hit next, it will take me to the SharePoint Central Administration console of the web application that needs to be configured. Yes, I'm going to set a static port to it to make sure that I would be always remembering this. So let me just enter a port number of 2014, that is the, the present year, which would help me to remember all the time. Yes, here we go. Here we have a list of information as a summary that we could make sure before we could proceed with it. And when I hit next, it would try configuring the SharePoint configuration database with the credentials and the settings that we have performed on this installation wizard. This would also set up the central administration portal which we term it as CAP where we could, that is the heart of the SharePoint where you could make all your changes and also manage all the changes at any point of time. So this is quite simple and it would take a couple of minutes to set up and once this is done, your SharePoint farm is done and you will be able to browse your application.
So what's more, let's confirm the same with the databases by clicking on the SQL Server Management Studio. You should be able to find your default databases that has been set up for the SharePoint. Yes, here we go. We find a SharePoint admin content database and SharePoint configuration database. Yes, then we are good to go. Thanks for watching. You could reach me through my blog or, or through Facebook or you can tweet me on Twitter and also you can watch my videos on YouTube. Windows Azure. Think aloud, think cloud. Thank you.